Computer Science Lab, and today we're going to learn what a fraction is. So let's ask the crucial question. What is a fraction? Well, let's say that I have, I don't know, five blocks. So here's block number one, and because I'm a really lazy guy, just going to copy and paste this. So let's say I have, and let's make this simple, just five blocks. So this is block number five. All right, so let's say I have five blocks and suddenly, because I'm just messing around with them, I lose two of them. So if I lose two of them, now this might sound like basic subtraction to you, but think about it, how many do I have left? And if you watched the previous parts of the series, so it immediately come to you, three. And if you haven't watched the la last few parts of the series, just count, one, two, three. Now, how can we make this a fraction? Well, this is three out of how many were there originally? One, two, three, four, five. Three out of five. So this basically so, uh, shows you something like this. So three over five can be used to express something like this. But these are also like little division problems. This is what's called a proper fraction. What are the parts of a fraction? Well, a fraction has a numerator, which is the stuff on top, and a denominator, which is the stuff on the bottom. Now, you might have noticed in our original example, the stuff on the bottom was the original amount, and the stuff on the top was the amount that's left. Now, when this happens, when the numerator is less than the denominator, that's what we call a proper fraction. But we can also have improper fractions, where the numerator is greater than the denominator. An improper fraction might not make as much sense to you, but, oh, I got it. Let's say you have two apples, right? Now, I know these are not the best apples in the history of apples, but whatever. So now, let's say you slice them up. So, slicing them up, you get four slices from the first apple. Yeah, I know, those aren't the best seeds, but... And you get four slices from the second apple. Now, uh, let's pretend that the second apple looks exactly like the first apple because they have uh, the same slices. So now let's say you're getting the hunger and you eat two of them. Now, in terms of apples, how many apples do you have left? Well, you can't say... What the hell? Well, you can't say six out of eight because there were originally two more. That's not how it works because that would be in terms of apple slices. We have six out of eight apple slices left. But how many apples do we have left? Well, we know four slices make one apple, so that's one. And then, what about these kiddos? Well, this is two slices out of four, or half of an apple. So this is half an apple. So that means we have one and a half apples, or what we can use to make an improper fraction. Three over two apples. Now that might not make sense. How do you get three apples from two apples? But that's not what we're talking about here. Since we have one apple and a half of an apple, Adding those together makes three halves of an apple. Now, how does that work? Well, 
Fractional arithmetic is basically the same as regular arithmetic. Here, let me show. So fractions are like little division problems. For example, the fraction 10 over 5, and I'm sure this comes to your head immediately, 10 over 5 is supposed to be 2. So, what we can do is, you know how dividing a number by itself will always give you 1? Well, that means that we can split 1 into any number over itself. Like 1 is 7 over 7. 1 is uh, 5 over 5. 1 is pi over pi. 1 is 17 million over 17 million. 1 is anything over itself. And this is super useful because, remember, that uh, multiplying any number by 1 gives you itself. Pi times 1 is pi. 5 times 1 is 5. Uh, I don't know. Einstein times 1. I know, that's not Einstein, but... Einstein times 1 is equal to Einstein. Uh, he looks something like this, okay? I'm so sorry, Einstein. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> he looks like a demented old lady. <laughs> Let's just remove that example, okay? Alright, so, because of this multiplication property and this division property, we can combine like this. So, for example, that 1 plus 1 half problem, we take that 1 and we can multiply it by 2 over 2. Now, doesn't this change the answer? Well, no, because recall 2 over 2, anything over anything, is equal to 1. And multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So, we have 1 times 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So, that gives you 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2. And when they have a common denominator, you can add these two guys. Now, say it with me, 2 plus 1 is... No, you guys are too smart for that. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 over 2. All right. So that's how you can do uh, fraction addition. Fraction subtraction works much the same way as you might expect. 3 over 5 minus 2 over 6, for example. It's going to look something like this. We can take 3 over 5, multiply it by 6 over 6. Then we can take 2 over 6, multiply it by 5 over 5. This doesn't change either of the numbers. 3 times 6 is 18 on the top, and 5 times 6 is 30 on the bottom. 2 times 5 is 10 on the top, 6 times 5 is 30 on the bottom. And now we have two common denominators, so we can subtract, and it gives us 8 out of 30. So, as you just saw, multiplication on fractions works uh, like this. When you have two fractions multiplied together, uh, maybe that's not the best example. When you have two fractions multiplied together, that's the white pen, not the black pen. Then, it basically becomes... The numerator times numerator over the denominator times denominator. Oh, yeah. And one more thing, guys. You, <coughs> While you can add the numerators if they have in <coughs> something in common, if they have a common denominator, you cannot add the denominators if they have a common numerator. 2 over 3 plus 2 over 6 is in no way equal to 2 over 9. Oh my god. So just remember, don't do that. All right, and that's it for what is a fraction. Now we know fractions are like division. Fractions are kind of like expressing how much is left out of an original value. We know how to add subtract and multiply with fractions.